All right, guys, welcome back to Keeping the Comic. And today we're jumping back into Venom with another Venom War tie in. Now, in this one, we get to see Kathan, the demon who created the Darkhold, who puts old man Venom through quite a few different tests. Old man Venom is also forced to make a brutal decision that costs him more than just his name. And then we have a surprise guest towards the very end that will make this series all the more interesting. Now, just to catch you up on where we are in the series, in the last issue here, Old Man Dylan, AKA Old Man Venom, I promise you it will make sense as to the reason why I'm calling them that a little bit later on here. Now they are in the past and they had taken the molten gold from Mota Man, which is an ingredient that he's going to use to make this ultimate weapon. He then made his next stop to see Doctor Strange, who was supposed to help him get the next piece that he needs to create that weapon. What Dylan needed for, for Strange is that he needed him to take him to see Kathan, a powerful demon who created a dark hole for his help. Now, when they get there, they meet these creepy little children and a bunch of hideous looking monsters. Now, when they were pressed, Dylan, along with the Venom symbiote and Doctor Strange, they get into this fight, which shortly leads the ground to opening up with Kathan's voice saying, bring them to me, which is where we pick up on here in this issue. Now, this place is called the Flickering Realms, and you will see why as we go along. Now, as they descend down, Strange is warning Dylan that Kathan is not just your ordinary demon. He is to demons what the universe is to humanity. He's going to challenge you and test you. He will ask for something in return for his help. It might seem small, but whatever it is, it is going to be valuable. Now, when they see him for the first time, Dylan recognizes the place around them. That's because this is the future that he knows, the future where he's from. Now, when Dylan asks a question, like, yo, are you? And Kathan then replies, he's like, I am the Lord below, or in this case, above. Now, Kathan knows why Dylan is there, which of course is to ask for his help. He even knows his name and mentions how he's broken the world, confirming that Dylan has something to do with how his future is the way that it is. Now, Kathan mentions how he likes this quiet, peaceful, in a way, dystopian future. However, things don't stay silent for long as he hears some noise coming from a close location. Now, Dylan recognizes that sound. It's the same sound that he is all too familiar with from his future. It's the same sound that, as he says, they make when they hunt. In a matter of moments, we see those same creatures that we saw in Venom issue number 36, the half symbiote, half machines. Dylan is able to take out one of them, and then he goes to draw the other two away from everyone else. Now, this time, he is not so lucky, as one of them starts to grab him by the neck. Now, instinctively, he is able to fire off one of his magma rounds, which takes the last one of them down. But that one still had his tendrils on him and it shocks him a little bit here. Now, one thing that Kathar would like to know after seeing all this, he's like, listen, these things are half symbiote and half machine. Why did you think nukes would be the correct answer to this? Then he makes this joke about how they've been taking bets on how long it would be before humanity nuked themselves to oblivion. And he was like, I have my money on 1962, referring to the Cuban Missile Crisis. So Dylan shrugs it off and then he asks the question, he's like, yo, can you help us? Can you help me? We have to stop this. But Kathan thinks his plan is a little desperate and also feeble. He then shows him his father, Eddie, with his mom and weighing, who Dylan had seen when he traveled back to the past now. Now Kathan wants to know, when you were there, why didn't you just shoot him? And then he asked him again, he was like, wouldn't it have been easier just to do this? Also, he kind of like, like entices him on a little bit here and says, also, you can do it now if you want. Now, the reason Kathan is doing this here is because he feels like he's been asked to give something when he feels like Dylan is not prepared to give up anything else himself. But then Dylan explains if he thought it would help, he would take out his father. Shoot, he's like, listen, I would take my own life or give my own life if that would help. Which honestly, guys, is just going to play into what Kathan wants later. Now, in the last test here, Dylan sees the creepy little children again that they're being chased by these machines. And Dylan is like, we have to do something. So Kathan flips this and says, okay, Dylan, 
you choose. I'll save them or you. So what Dylan does is that he gets the children to safety. Then he tells Kathan that he will hold them off, referring to the machines. Now, when he heads back out, it does not go well. More tendrils wrap around Dylan and through Dylan, I might add, which causes the Venom symbiote to cloak over him. But that doesn't even save him either, as he looks like he's about to implode from the inside out. But then it stops and we see Kathan on his throne with Strange and the others around him because this entire thing, the entire time, was not real. So Kathan tells Strange how foolish it was to come here, mentioning how he's been around since before man and will be there after man. So why would he involve himself in the downfall of their world? So Strange hits him with a clap back and says, does it not bother you that humanity will end without your permission or influence? Which of course catches Kathan cause he's like, oh, okay, I see you smart wizard. So later on, the children mention how Dylan has passed the test. So Kathan is like, all right, I'll help you, but for a price. So when Dylan asks, okay, what will you have of me? The children go on to make their list of all the things that they want in exchange. They're like, okay, give me your first love. All that he knows about his mother, his music, his friendships, his tastes, his dreams at night. And then finally, Kathan says, and I will have your name, Dylan Brock. And bruh, I'm like, yo, what else is left at this point? So Dylan accepts, right? Receiving his word that if he gives everything up, that Cathar will infuse his magic into the weapon and then send them back to the Sanctum Sumptorum safe and sound. Now, when he does infuse his magic, both Dylan and the Venom symbiote can't help but feel empty because of all that has happened. They've lost everything here almost, basically. And the fact of the matter is, they don't even really know what is actually missing. Now, when they get back to the Sanctum Sumptorum, Strange is trying to wake up Dylan, but then Dylan asks the question, who is Dylan? So Strange is like, old man, do you still want to continue on this journey? So Dylan replies, of course, it's just that I don't know how to get there. So Strange tells him, listen, I can help you. And then he opens up a portal for him to walk through. Now, when old man Dylan gets ready to walk through the portal, he tells Strange, thank you. I don't quite remember your name, but thank you, wizard, which then causes Strange to think, well, I suppose that makes me your friend, old man. And honestly, this is actually really kind of sad. So after Dylan had walked through this portal, right, he ends up in these snowy mountains and he's just walking, like walking for days. He has no idea where he is and what he's supposed to do. Now on day seven, the Venom symbiote realizes that they've passed this tree multiple times before or at least once before and that they're essentially just walking in circles which just drops his spirit to the point where he doesn't even want to do this anymore but even then he continues on now as he does here as he walks it is mentioned that he doesn't feel the eyes watching him the only thing he's focused on right now is that his name is old man venom how he broke the world and how he's going to undo it so he ends up seeing this house which of course is incredibly suspicious but then he goes in anyways now when he walks in he sees this woman who let's be real doesn't look real like it's obvious right so the venom symbiote immediately doesn't like this so they sit down to have some food but here's the thing remember he can't taste anything now the venom symbiote feels like someone is trying to get into their brain and he tells old man Lo old man dylan he's like do something listen he's not dylan anymore I'm, it's gonna take me a while to get used to that but he says listen do something but Basically, if you look at old man right now, he's basically kind of like stuck in a trance until he finally says, stop that. But here's the thing. The woman could find no name when she was looking, no mother, no friends, only a purpose. And then the word says, or the phrase here says, glorious purpose. So we know who this is, right? So the Venom symbiote takes matters into his own hands. He slams the woman down to the ground. And then the woman says, don't be like that. And then we realize it's not a woman at all. It's actually our favorite god of mistress, Loki, with the words, I only wanted to take a peek. So I will say there's an old bed sort of series right now. This cable looking dealer right now has been growing on me here. What did you think about this particular issue so far? Very curious to see now what Loki is going to do. I have some theories, but I'll wait until the next issue here. Like and subscribe for more on the channel if you haven't done so already. 
hit the notification bell so that you know when the next video does go live. If you haven't joined the Discord as of yet, please do so. And until next time, and as always, thank you so much for kicking it with Keeping It a Comic.